Hi guys. So before we start with section A, that is external financial reporting decisions of your CMA part one syllabus, I want to take you through something very, very, very important. It is so crucial that I cannot let you go uh, into the topics without knowing this. So please pay attention. So the most important thing is you need to understand here your entire section A which is external financial reporting decisions is only for 15 percentage of your score right so it means that you are expected to go through two topics one is financial statements and the other one is recognition measurement valuation and disclosure two topics only for 15 percent of your score which is okay but if you see the second topic there are so many areas that are covered receivables in tan, uh, inventories, tangibles, intangibles, investments, foreign currency, current liabilities, contingencies, warranties, provisions, non-current liabilities, equities, revenue recognition, income measurement, defer taxes, leases, business combination, consolidation, gap versus IFRS. Sir, sir, we are ex and fair value measurement again. So we are expected to learn all these topics just for 15%, not even 15. If I actually consider these topics are also included for just 15% of the score. Sir, is there any scope that we can prepare something like important topics or stuff like that. This is a very common question that I keep getting from every batch of CMA US that I teach. So let me answer that directly. So to answer that, I want you, go, you all to look at what I am sharing here on the screen right now. So we are on the IMA page, which is Institute of Management Accountant. You can see here, I in dot imanet.org by ima certifications uh, hyph, uh, slash cma hyphen certification something something so this is actually directly from the ima portal you can see on your screen so what is cma and all that stuff i want you to just scroll down just keep scrolling down keep scrolling down you will see the cma has uh, two exam parts covering 12 competencies part one part two weightage everything we have already discussed so if I scroll down, here comes the most important one, my dear friends, that is CMA resources. As you can see on your screen here, CMA resources. So what is covered in this CMA resources, sir? This is what I want you to pay attention to. There is something called content specification outline. This is what I have already covered for you in the previous uh, video, which is basically the entire content of part one section a what are the topics covered and all that stuff but for the important topics i want you to go to the second section that is learning outcome statements so here let me open this learning outcome statements let me take the details of that okay so here you can see this is effective from 1st january 2020 and uh, part one financial performance and analytics planning performance and analytics so section a1 talks about financial statements and a2 talks about recognition measurement valuation and disclosure so here if you see ima has very clearly mentioned what you are expected to learn in each topic so in the first one that is uh, you know a1 financial statements further balance sheet income statement statement of changes in equity and the cash flow statement the candidate should be able to identify the users of these financial statements and their needs internal users external users how do they each use this particular set of financial statements demonstrate the understanding of the purpose of and uses of each statement what is the meaning of each statement what is the purpose of each statement and what is the use case of each statement you should know identify the major components and classifications limitations of each statement what are the drawbacks and limitations how various financial transactions affects the elements of each financial statement like if i record an additional sales so how would that impact the balance sheet how would that impact the profit and loss so technically my profit would go up my, my revenue would grow up uh, my profit would grow and my assets balance would grow either in the form of cash or receivables so like this you need to know similarly if i go down to integrated reporting what all am i supposed to know and here comes the important part part one section a2 regarding recognition measurement valuation and disclosure you have few topics given one is valuation of assets then valuation of liabilities income taxes leases equity revenue recognition income measurement gap versus ifrs already i explained all of this in the previous video also now before you start preparing this particular ocean of 
syllabus in section A. So look at these topics. What are we expected to learn from each area? So if I talk about asset valuation, that would include your inventories, that would include your tangible assets, intangible assets, investments, all these things are included in asset valuation. So within that, what are you expected to study, sir? Here it is very clearly mentioned. Identify issues related with the valuation of accounts receivable, including timing of recognition and elements for credit losses. So when I talk about accounts receivable, you should know timing of recognition, when they should be recognized and estimation of the balance, uh, you know, bad debts, elements for the credit losses. Then distinguish between receivable sold, which is factoring with recourse and factoring without recourse and what will be the effect of that on the balance sheet. Similarly, these two are major important topics when it comes to accounts receivable. Similarly, if I move on to the next topic, which is inventory valuation, which should be included, which should not be included, which cost should be included, which cost should not be included and which cost assumptions should we use, FIFO, weighted average, which methods are allowed, that is important. Then identify and compare cost flow assumptions used in inventories, flow of cost, cost of manufacturing, cost of goods sold, all that stuff. Then. If I move on, next one is lower of cost or market rule for LIFO based and all that stuff. Again, this will need some technical knowledge. When we go into the syllabus, you will be able to appreciate all these things. Calculate the effect of income, effect on income and on the assets of using different inventory methods. So if I use FIFO method, what will happen? If I use LIFO method, what will happen? If I use average method, what will happen? So how would be the income and, uh, uh, you know, assets increase or decrease based on method of inventory valuation? Analyze the effects of errors in inventory, different methods of uh, calculating inventory and what are their advantages and disadvantages, which is the recommended inventory method and cost flow assumptions that we should use. And this is all regarding inventory, sir, all these points. Then the next one would be regarding investments. Demonstrate an understanding of the following debt securities, particularly trading securities available for sale securities and held to maturity investments. Just to give you a glimpse again. You learn more detailed when you go into the sections, but just for you to understand, suppose I purchase some shares of, let's say, Reliance company. So I can purchase them with an intention for trading. You can see three different, uh, you know, reasons are given here. One is the trading. Yeah. So here you can see one is trading point number J. That's uh, you know debt securities here but again that can also be used for equity securities also either i can hold them for trading that means i purchase the reliance shares to sell in the market when the price goes up suppose today i purchased for 2500 rupees when reliance share goes to 2600 or 2700 i will sell it that is called trading or it could be available for sale i am holding it but if the market price is good i will sell otherwise i will hold it for longer period and held to maturity this is not applicable for uh, equity investments there is no maturity for equity investments but if it is something like a bond or a debenture i can hold it till the maturity date or a expiry date so how would that impact and what is the analysis of that all that stuff understanding and valuation of debt and equity effect on the financial statements using different depreciation methods straight line method written down balance method this is again tangible assets if you understand it then recommended depreciation method for a given set of data suppose if i am talking about furniture i would rather use a straight line method if i am talking about a computer i would rather use a uh, reducing balance method accelerated depreciation method so depending upon the type of the asset and use use of the asset we will learn when you go into that particular topic don't worry understanding and accounting for impairment of long-term assets and intangible assets including goodwill impairment is a new topic you might not have heard it in your plus one plus two or graduation again that's fine we'll learn it when we go there so basically what i want you to understand from this particular document this particular pdf is you know the important areas sir ima themselves has given you a list of important areas for section a not just section a all sections but use it mainly for section a okay similarly valuation of liabilities what are you expected to know income taxes you are only expected to know three points leases two points equity transaction two points revenue three points income measurement only five points so like this from each area from each topic of your syllabus what are the most important 
uh, aspects that you need to learn are already given by IMA in the form of CMA learning outcome statements. We call it as loss learning outcome statements. So please go through these loss topics before you start, you know, going through the entire syllabus and all that stuff. Particularly when you are doing the revision, make sure you keep this as a checklist. Like open this. Once I'm done with the first point, check. Point B, check. Point C, check. Like that. So that would make sure that you completed all the important topics of your syllabus without missing out on anything. All right. I hope this video helps you guys in understanding what are the important areas of your syllabus. And uh, I hope this will help you. So with that, I'll end this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep smiling. Take care. Bye-bye.